Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the Wreath Network on TriHackMe. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 10, Pivoting with Proxy Chains and Foxy Proxy. In this task, we'll be looking at two proxy tools, Proxy Chains and Foxy Proxy. These, allow, these both allow us to connect through one of the proxies we'll learn about in the upcoming tasks. When creating a proxy, we open up a port on our own attacking machine, which is linked to the compromise server, giving us access to the target network. Think of this as being something we uh, like a tunnel created between a port on our own attacking box that comes out inside the target network. Like a secret tunnel from a fantasy story hidden beneath the floorboards of a, uh, the local bar and exiting in the palace treasure chamber. Proxy chains and foxy proxy can be used to direct our traffic through this port and into our target network. Let's first talk about proxy chains. Proxy chains is the tool, or is a tool we have bri already briefly mentioned in the previous task. It's a very useful tool, although not without its drawbacks. Proxy chains can often slow down a connection. Performing an nmap scan through it is especially hellish. Ideally, you should try to use static tools where possible and route traffic through proxy chains only when required. That said, let's take a look at the tool itself. So proxy chains is a command line tool, which is activated by prepending the command proxy chain to other commands. For example, to proxy netcat through a proxy, you could use the command proxy chains netcat, and then you have the actual netcat command. Notice that a proxy port was not specified in the above command. This is because proxy chain reads its options from a config file. The master config file is located at etsy proxy, proxychains.com. This is where proxy chains will look by default. However, it's actually the last location where, pro where proxy chains will look. The locations in order are the current directory. So for example, if you have a proxy chains, or proxy chains .conf file in the current record, uh, directory that you are in, then it'll check your home directory for a .proxy chains folder with a proxy chains.conf in there and then it'll check etsy proxychains.conf. This makes it extremely easy to configure proxy chains for a specific assignment without altering the master file. Simply execute cp, and we'll go ahead and do that on our current machine. Uh, let's see, we can exit because we've already started our shell on that machine. Uh, we can do cp etsy proxychains.conf to this location. Uh, hold on. Let's go up here, uh, and I think I might need to install proxy chains. Install proxy chains. Yep, there we go. So I needed to install it with a fresh install. And then we should be able to copy that here. And we can see that we have a uh, proxy chains.conf file. Then make changes to the config file in a copy stored in your current directory. If you're likely to move directories a lot, then you could place it in a dot proxy chains directory under your home directory, achieving the same results. If you happen to lose or destroy the original master copy of proxy chains config, a replacement can be downloaded from here, which is actually really nice that that's included there. Speaking of the proxy chains comp file, there is one section of particular use to us at this moment in time. Right at the bottom of the file are the servers used by the proxy. You can set more than one server here to chain proxies together, However, for the time being, we'll stick to one proxy. So we can see our proxy list there, and then we have the type, and then we have the IP address there, so localhost in this specific case, and then the port that we're going to connect to. Specifically, we are interested in the proxy list section right there. It is here we, that we can choose which ports to forward the connection through. By default, there is one proxy set to localhost port 9050, and this is the default port for the Tor entry point should you choose to run one on your attacking machine. That said, it's not hugely useful to us. This should be changed to whichever arbitrary uh, port is being used for the proxies, which we'll be setting up in the following tasks. There is one other line in the proxy chain's configuration that is worth paying attention to, specifically related to the proxy DNS settings. If performing an MMAP scan through proxy chains, this option can cause the scan to hang and ultimately crash. Comment out the proxy underscore DNS line using a hashtag or the pound sign at the start of the line before performing a scan through the proxy. 
So we'll do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quickly just so that we have it done. Nano proxy chains.com. And then we do not want a proxy DNS. So we'll just comment that out. Other things to note when scanning through proxy chains, you can only use TCP skins. So no UDP or SYN skins, ICMP echo uh, packets. Uh, so ping requests will also not work through the proxy. So use the dash P N switch to prevent MMAP from trying it. It will be extremely slow. Try to only use nmap through a proxy when using the nmap scripting engine. So for example, using a static binary to see where the ports are, uh, where the open ports uh, slash hosts are before proxying a local copy of nmap to use the NSC. Let's talk about proxy proxy. Proxy chains is an acceptable option when working with the command line tools, but if working in a web browser to access a web app through a proxy, there is a better option available, namely foxy proxy. People frequently use this tool to manage their burp suite slash zap proxy quickly and easily, but it can also be used alongside tools we'll be looking at in the subsequent tasks in order to access web apps on an internal network. Foxy Proxy is a browser extension which is available for Firefox and Chrome. And I will actually, real quick before we go on, I'm going to go and install this on Firefox. This is a fresh install, so I don't have it installed. You can go and just click on that link. Um, very easy. There we go. Add. Got it. Okay, cool. And that is it. That's all we needed to do. There is a version for Chrome. I use Firefox as just my de facto uh, pen testing browser. So I recommend just sticking to one browser for pen testing and one for no more usage. And having Firefox for just pen testing is very easy. There are two versions of Foxy Proxy available, basic and standard. Basic works perfectly for our purposes, but feel free to experiment with standard if you wish. After installing the extension in your browser of choice, Click on it in your toolbar, and I have it up here. It's a little bit small, and then we're going to click on Options, and we'll bring that over here. Click on the Options button. This will take you to a page where you can configure your saved proxies. Click Add on the left-hand side of the screen, and we're going to go ahead and fill in the IPN port on the right-hand side uh, that appears, then give it a name. Set the proxy type to the kind of proxy you will be using. SOX4 is usually a good bet. Although Chisel, which we'll cover in a later task, requires SOX5. An example config is given here. Um, it's a little bit chopped off for my purposes. Let me go ahead. I will get this pulled up and we'll enter this all in. Let me just pull it up on another tab. And we can get this all typed up. So we're going to do add. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So we'll click on add and then we're going to name it. Uh, we'll just fall by the demo leap proxy, which is just the name there. And then it is going to be a SOX4 proxy. We'll have the SOX5 one later when we're using chisel. And then it's going to be on our local host address. And we're just going to use it on the port lead. Um, We're actually going to do one above that because I'm using this for my... Uh, Actually, no, we'll do it on that port because I can kill that netcat shell. I was originally going to uh, change it just because my netcat shell is on that port, but we don't actually need this anymore. And there we go. Uh, let's go back over here to SSH. And then we do not use it, uh, username or password with this, so we'll just go ahead and save it. And there we go. Let's go back to the task. Press save, then click on the icon in the uh, taskbar to bring up the proxy menu. You can see that up here and if we click on that it'll switch to the proxy you can switch between any of your saved proxies by clicking on them and we can do that right there once activated all of your browser traffic will be redirected through a chosen port so make sure the proxy is active be aware that if the target network doesn't have internet access like all try hack me boxes then you will not be able to access the outside internet when the proxy is engaged this is why it's helpful to have one browser that is dedicated for pen testing and another one that is dedicated for normal usage. So you have the proxy turned on on, for example, Firefox. In this specific case, I'm going to have to toggle back and forth a little bit and I'll probably pull open uh, probably another uh, window and just slap it on the side for answering questions. Even in a real engagement, routing your general internet searches through a client's network is unwise anyways. Uh, they can pick up on that traffic. Uh, the DNS requests and other things like updating Kali on, you know, a target network is a bad thing. 
uh, you will be caught for that. <laughs> um, so turning the proxy off or using the routing features in Foxy Proxy Standard for everything other than interaction with the target network is advised. With the proxy activated, you can simply navigate to the target domain or IP in your browser and the proxy will take care of the rest. What line would you put in your proxy chain's configuration file to redirect through a SOX 4A or SOX 4 rather proxy on a localhost address and then on port 4242? We can do that with SOX 4. 127.0.0.1 and then we have a space and then our port number. What command would you use to telnet through a proxy to 10 10 10 uh, to port 23? We would use proxy chains at the start and then we have our basic command after that. 10 and then 23. There we go. And then you have discovered a web app running on a target inside an isolated network. You set up a proxy to gain access to the application. How do you access the proxy? Uh, either via proxy change, PC for that answer, or Foxy proxy. Since it is a web app and we want a web view for that, we would do it with Foxy proxy. And that is going to do it for task 10. Uh, before, if I'm going to be using Foxy proxy for something, I may set up uh, Chromium on this machine or Google Chrome. Uh, I will get that done and I'll show how I do that in uh, before we use it. So I might end up doing that just so that I have um, Firefox for doing try hack me in. And I would advise that you do the same. I will show that if I end up going that route. But until the next video, uh, happy hacking.